Hey y'all, I'm Todd Bailey. What's up? It's Ari Lumberdozy. And this is fucking brutal. Get in the pit, stock up the fridge, and listen. We're here to cover the latest in metal news and craft beer. A match made in hell. If it makes you bang your head, then we want to hear it. If it tickles your taste buds, share those suds. Turn it up to 11. Crack open that beer. It's about to get brutal. What is up, Pop Wolves? It's your boys, Todd and Ari, coming at you with episode 71 on 317. I love how it works out, dude. Universe is a flat circle, bro. Uh, This is cool, man. We're just coming off of our Q1 review show, which was always going to be fun. Like, it's always cool to, like, recap what we've been listening to. But uh, now we're moving forward. Uh, Every once in a while, there's not going to be a featured episode so this is kind of just us talking this episode but this is our bread and butter in a way because we love just talking metal talking beer uh yeah man how's uh, your week been going i know you kind of been a little under the weather but uh hopefully the rebound's coming sooner than later yeah dog uh today i feel good but it's been like it's been all week it's just been i don't know what it is because i i was like not feeling good uh, i i I know what it is. Like my schedule's been all over the place, and then traveling and weather hasn't been helping. All that stuff has just been a uh, a concoction for me not feeling good. As as Todd put, we're poofooing the sickness away. Peace up, motherfucker. Fuck you. That's what I'm saying to the sickness. And we really, what it comes down to is Todd and I were joking when we were recording last episode. The, well, it's not a joke because this is a fact. Disturbs believe album is better than Down with the Sickness, but when I said that and when we were talking about it, I got sick. So mm-hmm. I just I hope I don't just fuck myself over again. Anyway, feel good now ish, like eighty percent, but enough to come hang out with my boy and the Hop Wolves. Uh, but that's been that's been lame. Just been trying to recoup this past week, but. As long as I've been good for this upcoming weekend, because on Saturday, Skylar and I, my wife, will have been together five years, and then on Sunday is our one-year wedding anniversary. So, oh, yeah. really excited for that and to spend time with her because she has off all weekend from work. So we're gonna, we're just gonna kind of keep it loosey goosey, man. I know we're gonna go see Scream at some point. Uh, but just kind of celebrate each other because we haven't really had a chance to do that. Um, actually, like this past year, like not that much. So it'll be really nice. And as long as I'm feeling good for that, then that's all that matters to me. But yeah, so big weekend for your boy. And what about yourself? I know this week also hasn't been super kind to you. Well, let me first off say congrats on hitting those milestones, dude. That's Thanks, buddy. what's up. Uh, yeah, dude. Get as loosey goosey as possible. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you were kind of referencing, not been the greatest week. We have a sick cat in the household, Abby. She's not feeling well. Uh, we've gotten exams done. Uh, actually, today we're kind of waiting on a phone call to see what happens from those results. So keep yeah. your fingers crossed, hoping for the best. Uh, again, yes, yeah, she's not feeling well, not eating a lot, uh, a lot of weight loss. So we're kind of scared be honest yeah. about it but yeah. uh trying to keep keep positive hoping uh it's something that there's a solution to so that absolutely we can, yeah get her on the back to good health she's an old cat so it's it's not like out of the blue uh old cats are gonna get sick at some point but like we're hoping it's nothing too serious yeah um but uh, other than that uh i had a Pretty good week work wise, thankfully. Uh, so I'll count that blessing and then uh, start playing that metal hell singer game to kind of distract myself from everything going on. And that's been a lot of fun, dude. Soundtrack alone is, I feel like that album should be released, in my opinion. Uh, Maybe it will. Yeah. Um, I'm also anticipating that DLC with Will Ramos coming. Uh, it's going to be mm-hmm. in a couple weeks. So I'm. Pre- preparing myself to get better 
at the game. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> playing it on easy because I'm just I'm not good at shooters anymore. But uh, it's a rhythm based shooter as well, so I just need to maybe fine tune those calibrations because right now I'm missing so much. Just get just get more rhythmic, dude. What are you doing? That's the issue. I'm a white boy trying to find his rhythm. So let's mm. let's see how that works out. Um, but b- beyond me, uh, we did want to wish everyone a happy St. Patty's Day. That's yes. is when we're recording on 317. Along with that, though, there's some awesome news. We just reached 600 follows on Instagram. So shout out to the Hot Wolves out there. Cheers to Fuck you. Fuck yeah. Uh, already wrote down, pedal to the metal. For real, though, like uh, it kind of seems like one step forward, two steps back, three steps forward with followers <laughs> on social media. And we accept anyone that have followed us. Uh, we love to see it. We're here for it uh, just because we we love learning about more bands. And that's kind of like what comes with it is is the more people that follow us, they kind of bring with them other people and we'd love to feature you. So, uh, reach out to us, DM us, uh, let us hear what you got guys. Yeah. It's, it's really like, it's, it's very surreal to have any sort of following. So we, we very much love and appreciate all the hot holes out there, new and old. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, pedal to the metal. Like let's, let's keep that going. And I mean, it's not, you know, it's not about the followers, but it it does, it does make us feel good knowing that like we're doing something that someone can connect with. Uh, Yeah. That's, that's why we're, we're doing it. We just are two dudes hanging out and talking beer and listening to metal. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, almost always, but (laughs) but yeah, thank, thank you so much. Hopples. That's, that's killer. And, we're here for you, so cheers, and let's get into uh, let's get into the beer, dude. Since since we got a lot a lot to celebrate, there's a lot of silver linings for the week. Mm-hmm. So let's uh, let's let's go, dude. What do you got for us? What are you drinking, St. Patty's Day, 2023? Well, uh, I'm gonna hold both up actually this time. Uh, Got the can and the glass up. Uh, there's some green on here, so that's uh, celebrating St. Patty's a little bit. Uh, I have San Marcos Blonde, and this is from Aqua Brew, which is a brewery and beer garden in San Marcos, Texas, which is just south of Austin. Uh, so Love that's that dope. name. Yeah. Aqua Brew. Uh, it's actually a fun can. I'm going to try to hold it up. Uh, let me check my camera down here and make sure I'm actually showing it in frame. Um <laughs> It's got some cool cartoon work on here. I don't know the artist, but it has a a blonde chick. She's kind of like playing a guitar. It also shows her uh, reading a book, Stories of Texas. Uh, And then it's got this woman on a fish, but it's like a mermaid. So she's like riding a fish, almost like a horse with a cowboy hat. Uh, Hell yeah. You also have a couple of guys tubing down the river. Uh, Tubing is huge in that area. Uh, one of the summertime activities here in Central Texas that's everyone loves. Um, Did, is that you tubing on the on the can? Bet your ass it is. Uh, yeah, there's a guy in a cowboy hat, and then there's a guy with a big old mug of beer with sunglasses. That's awesome. So you have the lead singer from Gideon, and then you, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for those wondering, uh, it's San Marcos Blonde. It's a German Kolsch Texan style. So I wonder what they mean by that. Um, but it's got a cool little scroll on the side here. Uh, so I'm going to read that real quick before I taste the beer. Uh, so, so they have this character who's the woman and she's named Madison. And it says Madison has a unique dual personality problem. Every time her feet touch the San Marcos River, she turns into a freshwater mermaid. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Half, right. <laughs> Half of the time, she becomes a carefree, river-loving Beatles fan siren known as Flower Girl. The other half, <laughs> she turns into a wild George Strait lover, cowboy, <laughs> mermaid people call the Texas Onida. Oh, uh, I said it wrong. Texan Ondina. That's interesting. I've never heard of that. Uh, with, without control over her transformations, Madison jumps every day into the river in search of her next adventure. This is the legend of the San Marcos Blonde. Interesting. I wonder if it's like some local folklore or something. Uh, but that's cool. 
uh, people again, to look into. Yeah. Again, it's a German Kolsch Texan style. Uh, it's coming in at 5.2 ABV on the can. Uh, let's get one on the palate here. This is what it looks like in the glass. Uh, pretty much what you expect for Kolsch. But uh, I'm very, I don't know what Texan style means, so I can't really base that off anything. But here we go. Um, yeah, it was, it, me, I mean, I would, I would say the German part of it comes through really like with that ABV, I feel like it's actually nice in the pocket for it. Really smooth, very drinkable as a Kolsch should be. If a Kolsch is not drinkable, <laughs> you didn't make a Kolsch. Get the fuck out. Yeah, I have to believe it deals with maybe the hops they use because it, it tastes like if you bought like a German six pack of a Kolsch. Okay. I don't know how to describe that taste, only that because it, it, for me, it's like, oh, I'm saying, oh, this is definitely a foreign beer <laughs> from another right. country. But I feel like it's because of the hops that they're using that gives it. That certain taste, but now I really like this. I I think I like it so much because it actually has like a good flavor to it, as opposed to being like a watered down beer, which some coal shoes you could say that. Right. Yeah, I would definitely buy a six pack of this, man. Go tube and find that mermaid, bro. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I love everything. I love love the presentation on the can. Uh, solid beer. Yeah, all around. Great experience with this one. That's what's up, homie. Always good to have a, a nice Kolsch for for your palate. And um, it's funny because, like, looking at both of our beers, neither of us got anything, like, for St. Paddy's Day. Yeah. So there, there's no stouts. There's no, like, Irish reds or anything. So apologize for that, Hopples. This, this was not, like, how it was meant to be. But that's okay. Uh, we're going to make do with what we have. Yes, sir. Todd. Yeah. Yeah. Yours, your sounded dope. I really like the backstory and the presentation for that. As the hopples know from, from previous episodes, like that's a big thing for me is just mm -hmm. having the, the full package there. And it elevates even beers that I'm not like super into, but awesome stuff, dude. Uh, I, I'm also like more, well, I won't even say like, cause, cause yours is like the Texas take on the German Kolsch, but mm -hmm. I do have a, uh, I guess this would be the Pittsburgh take on, on a Bach. Uh, <laughs> but I have today, which I I've been sipping on it cause I, I've had this beer many times before. Uh, but this is the first time I've been like in the area to get anything like this. So there, there'll be a lot of like Pittsburgh and PA based beers from, from the show on the show i should say anyway what i'm talking about here for everyone watching and for everyone listening i should say I'm not i'm not excluding anyone i apologize i have the double chocolate bock from blockhouse brewing uh now blockhouse is from pittsburgh and i've like i mentioned before i've had this many times it has been a minute since i've had this particular one it is a bock uh, coming in at 6.5% ABV with 15 IBU, so low, which is to be expected. Per the label, robust notes of milk chocolate, creamy vanilla, and silky caramel accentuate a sweet malty base. To describe the bottle and the label, uh, it, it honestly threw me off having a bottle because I needed a, a bottle opener. And, and I always get cans, so I'm just like, dude, where the fuck is that thing? <laughs> or, like, I was looking for, like, a lighter or anything for, like, a hot minute. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of funny beforehand. Um, but, yeah, so so the label, it has, like, it has, we'll, we'll say the blockhouse on it. I don't know the origins of, like, what that means exactly, but it's it's a very, like, pretty standard label. You have the blockhouse kind of, like, in the background, uh, but the... The colors of the label are like a um, it's a dark brown and then like a like a caramel color up top with some white font. So big, bold look to it. 
Um, of note, all the labels for Blockhouse's stuff look the same. They just switch the colors around. Uh, and, and you'll see that with a lot of breweries. And, and I kind of like when they do that. So, like, you know exactly what it is to be like, mm-hmm. oh, I I know, I know that's a Blockhouse beer. Of note, their logo, they have, like, two keys crossing. Uh, and then, like, the little, um, I don't know what you call it, like, the teeth of the key um, are a B and a H for Blockhouse. But I love seeing it because it reminds me of Hundredth sold logo when they were a hardcore band. Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. Uh, and, and that always makes me happy because they, they were a super good hardcore band. I, I do like what they're doing now with like the shoegaze and everything, but I just remember seeing those keys like all over the place back, like early 2010s type of deal. And mm-hmm. so anyway, that always kind of gives me a little, like a little smile side notes, uh, because I am coming off of being sick. My palate is not stellar, so I might be missing some notes and also like I got this for a, a fucking bargain, dude. Since, like, I, I just always on that hunt, man. It's like a thrill. Um, so this is a seasonal beer. And one would imagine it's a winter seasonal. So, like, it's been, it's not super fresh. So I will say that. But still very tasty. To get one on the palate for the show, though. Yeah, while you're drinking that, dude, that that bottle looks PA to me. For sure. It, abs- it absolutely is. Yep. That's a that's a pretty good descriptor of it. Yeah, man. I mean, it is. It's very smooth. Like they said, silky caramel accents a uh, accentuates, I should say, a sweet malty base, robust notes of milk chocolate, creamy vanilla. Yeah, I mean, it, it's super chocolatey, and uh, especially when you can get it on draft, uh, it, it is very very tasty. And Blockhouse actually, they make one of my favorite pumpkin beers so they're really good at like balancing flavors like that one is not like overtly spicy or overtly pumpkin uh i will say that this is definitely heavier on the chocolate side of it and i'm guessing i mean it's double chocolate so that makes sense yeah it's it's very decadent and i know that when when I usually pour it out, like it is brown, like a Bach would look like. So it's it's not like it is dark, but it's it's probably about the color of this bottle here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean it's it's really good mouthfeel, and all the notes are there. I I've been getting this stuff for years, so like I I would definitely recommend it. Um, but just keep in mind that like, it is it is rather sweet. And uh, what is nice compared to other beers of this, like, it's cool that it is a Bach because almost always it's going to be something heavier like a stout. Um, Or, I mean, Porter would be kind of like adjacent to it in a way, but you don't usually get like these types of flavor profiles from a Bach, like your your German style lager. Um, So so it is kind of a cool take on it. And uh, yeah really nice like dessert type beer but it's lower abv and a lot of times when you get something like this i feel it's got a higher abv so it's like a one and done type of deal but yeah as long as you like like really chocolatey type of beers highly recommend um i like this beer a lot and the brewery is solid oh yeah dude yeah no i've i've never actually heard of those guys so i appreciate you bring them on the show uh promote one of their beers yeah, I don't I don't think anyone from back home has really talked about them. So that's I'm trying to think like so I've I've never been to the brewery like maybe now that I'm here can actually can actually do that. But my my old boss, shout out Sam Paparelli at, at a thousand beers was always big on bringing this one, the pumpkin ale, and then they have one called Summer Break that's really popular. It's like a grapefruit shandy, I believe it is. It's definitely choice. grapefruit. Yeah. Um, that's another one. Like it's it's a really nice summer beer as long as you like grapefruit. Like that that's the thing is like whenever they are good at balancing the flavors, but sometimes it it would be like a little bit more heavy handed. So like more grapefruit, more of the chocolate, more of the pumpkin. But I don't know. I think it's pretty well balanced. Um, I haven't had a bad beer from them. So yeah, gotta recommend it. That's what's up. Yeah, I'll have to check them out. Uh, if I got a chance to, but, uh, to keep this train rolling, dude, uh, 
we've got a awesome metal headline today uh kind of in the same fashion when we talked about taproot uh we're talking about another old band if you will that's uh re-emerging who has re-emerged over the past year uh we're talking about mudvane uh but now you know how they've talked about doing new music i think that day is finally coming they're teasing quote unquote the psychotherapy sessions uh this was posted by vocalist chad gray and he says expect a big reveal to take place tuesday march 21st so by the time this airs that'll be out but uh we're gonna talk about it that's what's up dude we've been kind of waiting in the background waiting and waiting for new mudvane music uh of course they've been touring they've been on some big tours uh in the past year or so but to hear new stuff that's what everyone's kind of waiting for and uh what are your thoughts on this like i i was stoked when my brother shout out polar bear dan bailey uh he he put this past our our desks if you will (laughs) 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 oh Uh, we have desks that's right um yeah, I was really happy when he sent this to me. I'm I'm stoked. That's all I can say is like I can't wait to to hear what it's going to sound like cuz this is a band that has always changed every album. Uh and we're going to talk about that a little bit on, on our favorites, but I don't know if this is going to sound like the new game. I don't know if this is going to sound like LD50, the end of all things to come. Who knows? That's the thing. That's it almost kind of scares me in a way. It gives me some anxiety. To to not know what it's gonna sound like, but like my mind is hoping for maybe a throwback a little bit to the the craziness of LD fifty. I feel well. I mean, let let me first start off by saying like very very fucking excited for this. It's no secret that Todd and I are huge Mudvayne fans, being uh, new metal new metal kids through and through. Th- this is something that I never thought would actually happen. But also when they got back together and started touring, like I also didn't think that would ever happen. Mm-hmm. So what a life we live. Pretty cool. Uh, it-, it will be interesting though. Like they, they are significantly older. Yes. Uh, I-, I know just based off of like what I've heard and seen like live clips and stuff. I mean, Chad, like Chad still has it, but I mean, he he's also like, I think he's like 50 or something like that. So I am curious to see where we're going to be at, like, scream-wise. True. But to your point, I feel like they're going to kind of, like, take a like a nod back to the old days just been, because, like... He's been, wearing that, he's been wearing that face paint a lot. That's what makes me think of it. Yeah, got the face paint, and it just seems like... Like they, they were talking about like you know when would Munvane come back and like the timing being right and stuff like that, uh, and and it seems like they got a lot to say as a band, which rightfully so. There, there's a lot going on in in the world today that needs to be talked about. I don't know, dude. I mean, I do. I think it's gonna be LD fifty. No, uh, I I know like they're all tripping balls watching like two thousand one a space odyssey when mm-hmm. that shit was being written. I, I don't foresee that happening. Would that be dope if it did again? Absolutely. I don't know. I, I want to I wanna just keep an open mind to it, but I feel like it is going to have the aggression of, if anything, somewhere between lost and found and like a new game type of deal. And and honestly, I would be super happy with that because lost and found is is one of my favorite Mudvayne albums. Yeah, so so we'll see. And I mean, even the fact that it's called the psychotherapy sessions, if if that's the title or not, like, you know, like there's some shit going on. Yeah. For for someone, I I can't I can't wait to hear new Mudvayne. Uh, but that begs the question there, doggy dog. What's your favorite Mudvayne album slash song? So I mean I could pick any of them in a way except I never really got into the new game. That's just that in the self-titled. There was a couple mm-hmm. good tracks for me on there, but uh, my heart and soul is LD50, dude. I have abused that record because I've played it so much. And yeah. one, so- one song I I could pick, again, I could be so indecisive and, and 
pick every song on it, but like this one I always return to. This is what I had on repeat when we would go to soccer games. <laughs> Death Blooms, dude. Death Blooms is my favorite track from that album. I, I love his vocal performance on it from the claims mm-hmm. to the screams. I, I love the meaning behind it. He, I believe, wrote it about his grandma. I'm pretty sure nice. there, there's some influence there on on a real life connection with his grandma because if you look at the music video for it it features an old woman right uh i think i read that somewhere but uh i just i love the meaning behind it i love the spoken word part just everything about it. the riffage uh it's it's a perfect song in my opinion one of the best bass lines ever brian mm-hmm. martini at his at his finest yeah, great, great choice, dude. I mean, you can't go wrong with anything off LD50. It's a phenomenal record. If I had to pick a, a number two, Severed. That's a that's yeah, a, Severed's a good song. Better prod. I, I could go on. I, I should stop. The whole album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even neg- even negative one is such like the Ed Gain reference. Oh, dude, I well, negative one is is one of my favorites off that that album. It's got like um, a funk section in it too, which is the crazy part. Like that's that's the thing. It's like they can go anywhere with their sound because they're just so damn good instrumentally. Yeah, you you can you can tell like that's that's like when the chemistry was really starting to hit for the band there because mm-hmm. they had one they had one before that which I never got super into. Um, yeah, the end of all things. To the come. end of all things to come. Yeah. Um, I remember finding that at a bargain store and I, I got it just cause I was like, yo, like I'm never gonna have a chance to find this again in CD form. Like, yeah, it's still, that's still a cool listen, but you, you can tell like the, the progression from that outing to LD 50, like leaps and bounds. Yeah. They propelled from there. Yeah. Yeah. Solid choice, dude. Like I said, I love lost and found, but the one I always go back to is the beginning of the end of all things to come. Or is it the, I always get the, it's the end of all things to come. Yes. I should know that. Yeah. Okay. Cause the, the one before LD 50 is the beginning of the end of all things to come. And then it's the end of all. Th- okay. Yeah. So the end of all things to come. Yeah. I think that was, no. I think on that second album, if you will, if you consider LD 50, their first, um, right. Yeah, the end of all things to come, I think, was like a nice nod to the beginning of all things to end. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, now it sounds like I haven't listened to the record at all. <laughs> I, I assure you I have. I can, um, I can vouch for him. But... <laughs> so the end of all things to come is my favorite. Um, I actually had a really hard time picking my favorite, but I'd probably have to go with not falling. Uh, really just because like, the music video and the fact that it was like one of the redeeming qualities for ghost ship. Yes. Uh, do the ending when, um, like the, the main guy like looks back at the, the surviving passenger and like, they start playing that song, like dude, fucking chills. Like, where's this type of soundtrack today? Damn it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I love, I love not falling. Um, very close runner up would be, silenced i love that song dude it's it's one of my favorite opening tracks to any fucking album and then actually i like the title track a lot too the end of all things to come yeah that's good that's a good deep cut Uh, i don't think many people think of that one off the top of their head but that's that's really good i know for me silence is definitely up there but the one after it's really good i think it's like trapped something trapped in the wake of a dream that might be the lyric, whereas I, I don't, I can't think of the title of the song. I'm like refusing to look it up to try to remember it, but I know, I know, I know. Regardless, uh, yeah, I, not I know. What you're time. Yeah, yeah, that's just like a solid second track. Just it, like, such a good, like, progression on the chord. I don't know. I mean, I, I think another thing, like, before we get into the albums and the CBB, that really was was a, a big difference between LD50 and The End of All Things to Come is they didn't like they were still theatrical but it was more subdued 
so like they didn't they didn't have like their stage personas anymore per se that's right Um, yeah they kind of switched up their whole look it was like all black and and they still it has one of my favorite like promo shots i'm pretty sure this was from the era like the floating heads in the water like all you could see are their eyes uh i thought that was like some of the hardest shit dude and i'm pretty sure the end of all things to come is like when they went to the vmas the mtv music awards absolutely Um, iconic i'm so glad i got to see that live I think that because they did one year with the bullet wounds yes, in the, the in the head. That's the one uh, but I then, saw. Yeah, but they did another one where they looked like aliens. Uh, I don't know. I think that might have been this air. Anyway, iconic, like Todd said, and um, yeah, if you're gonna revisit or for any of the the younger listeners that might not be familiar with Mudvayne, because you know we're kind of old, uh. LD50 and of all things to come. Those are those are the two for yeah, sure. Start, start there, definitely. I would just kind of go honestly go in order. In uh, order, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just because you'll kind of ride the same wave that we rode on just the, how they progressed in their sound. Yeah, we'll see what happens, dude. But I, regardless, I'm excited. Yeah, I am too. And, and I I know that Chad with this comeback said like like they've got a lot to prove still so that that still makes me believe like they're going to they're they're going to try to go like balls to the wall mm-hmm. with this one as long as they don't do what Corey did with like every slipknot album since like volume 3 basically where like this is Iowa 2 and like it's not Iowa 2 oh, like dude. I love you dearly Corey but there's just no fucking way you're going to be in that mindset again to yeah. make another album like that. And that's fine. But don't get my hopes up and then <laughs> and come out with um like All Hope is God, which I love that album. I'm not knocking it. But it was in Iowa too. Neither was the like chapter five. I'm actually glad you brought this up because now I actually really don't like when bands do that because it's mm-hmm. just like, no, create something new, like Yes, you can maybe reference a certain sound from previous releases, but I don't want like a rehash and you no. compare it because it's never going to compare how you think it is. No, and that's fine, but just let's just not get everyone's hopes up. But what we will do is get your hopes up for a fucking stellar album release day since we're able to record on a friday so always exciting uh it's funny before we get into this uh skylar and i are big fans of john oliver we watched last week tonight all the time and honestly i feel like that's what we are for like the metal community because like we record and then like release it the following friday so i'd like to think that we're like the john olivers of of the metal and beer community but they always have segments of like people like saying the same things on like Fox News or some shit like that. It's always super funny. I love I was that like, Man, so much, <laughs> dude. I I was I always think I was like that could definitely happen with our show. Like <laughs> we always repeat ourselves. So like I always think about that like for transitions and stuff like that. Just a small side note, dude. You could take but, every instance. I say highly recommend. Absolutely, dude. <laughs> Anytime we mispronounce something. Uh, sound like a broken record. Oh, dude, this is the heaviest episode. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poking fun of at ourselves aside, let's get into it. We're going to start off with Beyond Extinction with Nothing More Wretched EP. Then we have Chain Gang with Florida Fight Music, that EP. That's a, it's exactly what it sounds like. And of note, it has James Wilder from Pieced Up, vocalist of Pieced Up, on guitar duty in this band. Um, Pieced Up is a brutal alum, if you did not know. So, that's cool. Then we have some OGs up on this piece. Chelsea Grin released Suffer in Heaven, which is the counterpart to Suffer in Hell, which came out last November. Uh, fuck yeah. Then we have Darknet with Trash World. Embryo with A Vivid Shade on Misery. Erase Them with All Were Shamefully Silent EP, and this is Travis, formerly of Varials. This is his newer project. Been around for a little bit, but fuck, this this EP's sick. Then we have Four Token with Triumphs. 
Gideon, more power, more pain. Grave birth with all light will end. Our boys, brutal lum, hard graves with consequence of an action, their brand new EP. Indigo Ice with Phantom Limb EP. Invent Animate with Heavener. Uh, following that, we have Kava Who, which I, <laughs> that sounded really funny how I said that, but yes. uh, <laughs> it's not a question. This this is a fucking awesome album and band. Uh, their Carnivore album out now on iTunes and Bandcamp. Then we have Cruelty with Untopia. Nika with Agenda... I always forget these room numerals, but it's MM triple X. Uh, so whatever that stands for. I forget I'm what bad it means, but I know triple X is probably that's 30. 30. Yeah. I want to say M's a hundred. Listen, I can't do math right now. So yeah. Yeah. Same. Uh, so with this, with, with Nika's agenda, whatever the number is EP, <laughs> Uh, then we have Morgul Wound with Eldritch Violence. Fuck yeah. Uh, Scarab with their self-titled EP. This album is dropping tomorrow on 318, but we wanted to include it anyway. This is Telos with Delude. Then we have Unseen Faith with Prodigal Sons EP. Then finally, to round out everything, we have X Weapon X, which is Brian Garris from Knocked Loose fame, the lead singer. This is his other band, his hardcore band, uh, where he plays bass, I believe. They have a split with World of Pleasure, and the EP is called Weapon of Pleasure. I also, before we get into our affairs, I just wanted to say, if you ever hear, like, snoring or anything, my pup is not feeling very good today, so (laughs) there might be some of that on this recording. Um, But what... what really was was getting you going this week, dude? I mean, there's a lot of heavy hitters. What are some that that you just couldn't stop jamming today? Uh, so I did get a chance to check out maybe a few tracks from each of these. Uh, however, I did listen to the full Beyond Extinction. That is a great EP. Go check that out. Chelsea Grin, of course. I actually think this is heavier than hell. So I choose heaven over uh-huh. hell. Oh, yeah. I had to say that. Uh, I also got Gideon. That was a real fun listen. Hard Graves brought it. Brutal alumni. Shout out to y'all. Y'all are killing it on that EP. Uh, Kava Who's really great. And then Darknet is an awesome new metal album. Check that out. Last but not least, Unseen Faith. Uh, that was actually a really good EP. I uh, heard a couple tracks off of that and was very impressed. Yeah, dude. All stellar choices. I wish I could stop staying stellar, but it can't. It won't stop. Uh, but we have to like we we gotta we gotta nitpick, dude. Like what what's the one that really stuck out to you this week? I, I know it's hard. Yeah, I've been. We got We gotta that. do it. I've gotta been do avoiding it. Avoiding that, dude. Uh, Man, the fuck up. Finish that shit. I'm gonna go with Beyond Extinction, dude. I thoroughly enjoyed that album or that ep i should say uh i can't believe i chose that over chelsea grin because suffer in heaven is great but i i have to go with beyond extinction how about you dude like let me get the pressure off me and put it on you what what are you going with as as far as highlights and your favorite so the ones that i at least got a chance to to like partially listen to or did all the way through uh, erase them was was one I didn't know that they were coming out with anything, so that was a pleasant surprise. Uh, Travis's fucking vocal stylings, dude. I remember reading, I think it was on Reddit like years ago. They're like, it sounds like he's gurgling with rocks. Yes, and I have to agree. I fucking love that. So like, it just it really translates well into this this genre uh so that's one gideon that was a lot of fun dude suggestion listen to it like from front to back Mm -hmm. uh just because like the way that the interludes and stuff are set up it's it's a really good time uh todd and i were talking about this off camera but really really become quite fond of gideon over the years especially ever since they 
stop being like a religious band and that that really has nothing to do with it but like i just feel like they came into their own once they stopped kind of like being in that niche you know take that for what it is uh hard graves dude couldn't not talk about them they uh they put out some some of their the, like probably the best material they put out as a band fuck yeah uh, and then the grave birth. I, I actually been looking forward to this one for a little while. I know this is another fucking Pittsburgh band, and I don't know why it keeps happening, but the scene is thriving here in the general area. Uh, but with all that being said, dude, I had to go with the one that always makes me smile. I had to go Chelsea Grin. Uh, I agree. This is way heavier than Suffer in Hell, and I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to listen to it, like. In like the sequence, I guess, with Probably. Suffer and Hell and then yeah, the proper way. Yeah. But yeah, I I I love it, dude. It just kind of reminded me of like why Chelsea Grin is is still one of the the top dogs in the genre. It's it's a good time and I think it really fits like cause because we got the taste with it, uh, with Eternal Nightmare, which is honestly still one of my favorite Chelsea Grin records. Um and it's just kind of like more of an extension of that one, but like it just showcasing a lot of everyone's talent in the band now. So yeah, had to go with that one. Uh, but let's move into the Certified Brutal Bangers playlist. Do you want to take it away for us there, sir? Let's do it, man. Uh, starting off the top, we have Cast Into the Lake of Fire from harvest the lost dude this is actually a really good band that y- y'all should keep an eye out on uh, i've been pleasantly surprised with the songs we've featured from them hell yeah uh, after that we have plaster saint from sleep sculptor their pa band uh, and this one's actually featuring cameron mcbride of meth Witch, uh and his presence is known on this track so <laughs> let's just say that uh, go check it out after that, we have the song Misery from the band Eternal Bloom, and this is featuring Alexander Bryce Vershoor of The Breathing Process. Uh, again, same comment. His presence is known on this track. Uh, it's a solid fucking track, uh, so go check that out. After them, uh, we have the band Frozen Soul, and uh, they have an arsenal of war. Uh, I nice. actually heard this is a track that's honoring someone, so I have to look into that a little bit more. But uh, their okay, their sound is just as solid, frozen solid, as you might say. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah, no, I I am very much anticipating uh, the album coming from these guys. Um, after that, we have Cape Kong with their song "Scoundrel." Uh, we featured a few tracks from these guys, and they are always bringing it. After them, we have another single from Jesus Peace called Silver Lining. Uh, that album is definitely on my radar. So Hell yeah. Cannot wait. After them, uh, sort of in the pocket of hardcore, we have the band Incendiary uh, with their song Bite the Hook. Go check that out. After them, we have Dieth, Deeth, however you say it. It's spelled D-I-E-T-H. And this is actually David Elson. X Megadeth's new band. Uh, the song is called To Hell and Back. Uh, it's got an acoustic intro, but get through that, dude, and then you're gonna be slapped in the face with heavy. I was I was shocked because you think Megadeth, you you think okay, old school metal sound. No. Absolutely not. So uh very, very impressed with that. After them, uh, we have the band Agord, uh, and this is featuring Frax Riel. And the song is called Kingdom. Things get a little uh, new metal here from from here on out. Uh, we have, after them, Brutal Alumni in Fear uh, with what I'm going to state as uh, one of my favorite tracks so far from them, Virtue and Regret. Uh, this one's awesome, dude. Uh, you know, we talked about a little bit of like Loathe, Death Tones influence with these guys. This is like on all cylinders showcase is heavy as fuck but like just those moments of like being serenaded with the voice between the heaviness perfect um after them we have the band from joy uh with their song seraph and this is featuring iris.x so exe not sure which part the features on it could be the cleans 
featured in the song, but this this song is very heavy and very interesting. Uh, I really liked it. After that, we have the band Resider with their song Ratchet. Love the title. Uh, after them, we have Haraway with their song Parasite. Then we have Silosis with their new track Deadwood. After them, Barry Tomorrow. They're still chugging out new singles for this upcoming album. Uh, they just released the song Begin Again. After them, we have the Devil Wears Prada with their new track Reaching. Uh, I think it's like a, not a dual album, but it's uh, it's like a, another version of Color Decay. Yeah, it's, a, it's the deluxe version. Okay, yeah. But this is a new track from that, so check it out. Um, after that, we have Pupil Slicer with their new track Blossom. Uh, they sound a lot different on this. There's cleans, uh, but they sound great, dude. I yeah. this song has everything. If you want a solo, a bass solo, you want a breakdown, mm-hmm. you want <laughs> yeah. This song has everything. Music video is really good too. After that, we have the band Jinx. Uh, so this is the new new metal part uh, with their song Chuchi Frito, which I think <laughs> that's how you say it. But uh, really good time. If you like that high energy new metal, they bring it. Uh, after that, uh, I believe this band's from Michigan. We have the band Loser uh, with their song "I No Longer Feel Anything at All" in parentheses. I I really dig it. I really dig their sound. Last but not least, uh, these guys from San Antonio, love them. I got to see them live. Uh, they opened up for uh, the Great American Ghost. They were great, dude high energy new metal and uh this to me is like a perfect road trip song it's got the heavy it's got the catchy chorus uh the song is called lost cause and the band is king cold go check it out i think that's a dragon ball z reference but i'm not sure their band name maybe i could could be wrong but regardless uh a nice song to end out this list this always begs the question though what from the list is a highlight to you what is your favorite ari hit me with it Oh, oh, now we're doing favorites. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I was super pleasantly surprised by the new Pupil Slicer. Mm-hmm. This is another band. We we both fell in love with them uh, a few years ago when they dropped their Mirrors album. Us, uh, I love it so much. Mirrors, dude, that... it's yeah, so good. I I was that was one of the last vinyls I bought, and I'm so glad that I did. Uh it's it's an amazing, amazing record, so check that out. But yeah, this new direction that they're going in is really cool. It someone in the comments for the videos was like they really nailed like the two thousands era MySpace, mm-hmm. like visually and sonically. I'm like, yeah, they they definitely did. So I really like this direction that they're going in. Cannot wait for uh Blossom. I think this that's the name of the album coming out too in June. So sure. that would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, but also that Cape Kong, the scoundrel track fucking ripped my face off, dude. I loved it. The Eternal Bloom one was also pretty sick. Mm-hmm. I liked that one. Uh, I had to go with Sleep Sculptor, dude. Uh, I will say I only listened to like the top half of what's going on. So there's a lot that, that I haven't gotten to. But uh, I know like meth witch is kind of like really hit or miss for a lot of people in the metal community uh there's a lot of like gimmicky things in there but i i love meth witch i think uh it's just cameron but yeah. i think what he does is is craziness like just for the sake of craziness uh and it really complements like what sleep sculptor does anyway so i don't know i had a lot of fun with that track that's another album i'm super super looking forward to uh, but yet that Jesus piece though, dude, uh, that one comes out in a couple of weeks. So that that's going to be sick too. Yeah, dude, all uh, their singles have been great. They've, they've really stepped up like everything in the band and, and not, not that they were a bad band before, but whatever they're doing for this newest release, sign me up. That's what I'm going with. What about yourself? What's the one or few that's, that's really getting your, your head banging this week. Well, I know my favorite. I'm going to save that for last, but uh, I was really into the Harvest the Lost track, Sleep Sculptor. Again, that feature was a perfect match. Um, Frozen Soul was really good. Yeah. Um, Let's see what else. Uh, Again, In Fears, I thought was the best track so far that I've listened to from this new album coming. 
So I really enjoyed that. But my favorite is From Joy, the band From Joy, I should say. Uh, it was a weird sentence. But uh, <laughs> I don't know how to describe this band. I really don't. It's just they're doing really fresh takes on a certain sound that hasn't been mm-hmm. done before. But I just, I this feature that they have on this one is great. I think it's the clean vocalist. There's some cleans from a female vocalist that just adds this track. And I, I love the layering of like the guitars in the background to the heavy, like chugging and breakdown. That's probably the best I could describe it, but very much as I like to say, highly recommend. Uh, you have that in my head now. I know. I know. It's a, it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. I will say though, I think, I think they're ramping up to release either an EP or an album. Cause I, this is maybe the second or third track we featured from them, but yeah. it's, it's shaping up to be something really great. Uh, this though, this track alone, Seraph, uh, I really love. And I actually think they're using the same artists for their singles as Jesus piece. Cause it's like that. Oh, um, I thought that too. Yeah. I thought that too. I'm pretty sure it's the same artists. Uh, but I really like it. It's it's kind of like a, a pseudo 3D uh, kind of painting style look. It's probably the best I could describe that. Yeah. It it yeah. It looks like uh, it, it reminds me kind of of like Code Orange what they yes, do now. Absolutely. So I wonder. I wonder if they got. Um, I think it's Shade. Is is like they're like sample like. DJ, not DJ. That that's not that's not what he does. But uh, he does like a lot of their visuals and stuff. I wonder if he, they're working with him. But yeah, I know exactly. What, it's like a weird like three D rendering, but it looks like something off of like Windows ninety six type of deal. Yeah, it's like almost and, like an old video, like a retro video game. Yeah, I I yeah. love it. I I yeah. think it's super sick. Um, and especially the the Jesus piece because like all like the the figures are like. I don't. It, it looks like a logical progression of like kind of joyous and then like really like sorrowful. And I, whoever's doing it, fuck yeah, I'm it's I'm a, here for it. It's almost like a stop motion. Like if yeah, you put, if you put them together in one of those like uh, like a series of cards you flip through, it would be like an action. Almost. Maybe that's what they're going for. Who knows? Maybe but, that is what they're going for. Yeah, I I, I dig it. Uh, but yeah, that's my favorite from Joy. Again, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, we don't have a feature today, but that's all right because we love still talking about what released on the Friday. So go jam all this. The playlist is out now as you're listening to this. Um, but for us, we're going to roll out the red carpet for ourselves. Go check we're us. We're the feature. Yeah. Go check us out on Facebook. Instagram primarily is where we reside most of the time. Uh, but we also have a Twitter. Go follow us. I really don't tweet that much, but uh, I'll, I'll start to pick it up. And and then also Ari's on TikTok. Go check him out. Who knows if it'll still be a thing in the U.S., but go check it out while it's active. And right, uh, yeah, he's posting awesome videos. Uh, we're, we're we're dipping our toes into uh, some creative thoughts on uh, some funny stuff for the Hop Wolves out there. We're trying. We're, we're trying. trying. Yeah, that's all we can do. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Hop Wolves, for listening again on the 600 followers on Instagram. Fuck yeah. We love y'all. Cheers, baby. Much love.